Hey everyone, if you're new around here, we're the Evergreens, and this week we just hit our first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. So to celebrate, we thought it'd be fun if we jump on here and do a little Q&A video and answer some of your questions. So we're actually at our friend's house filming. We had planned to do this video at our house, but for some reason there was like a live band playing in our neighborhood tonight. <laughs> yeah, like a block party. Yeah, so real random, that never happens. There has never been a block party before, but of course it happened tonight. It's so noisy, but yeah, yeah this is a... Uh, it's more quiet it's nice around here. Nice and quiet here, nice and peaceful. So. <laughs> Hear the birds chirping. <laughs> yeah. So last week we asked you guys to give us some questions on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll be answering some of those in just a minute. But first we thought it'd be good to give you a little bit more info about us and what our hopes for our channel are, just because we've never formally introduced ourselves to you. So where do we begin? I guess the start of our story together. I met Laurel in 2015. It was early in the year. We both worked at the same cafe together. I was actually hired as a barista in place of Laurel. She was on a trip in Southeast Asia. She was away for a few months, so they needed a replacement. They hired me. And I think when you came home, you were just like a little bit apprehensive. Like, who's this new person taking over my I position? I was like, are you taking my job? Who are you? But yeah. then we hit it off and the rest she, is history. She couldn't resist my charm. <laughs> that's the truth. We started dating and by 2016, we started playing music together. Yeah, the cafe that we worked at did open mic nights every Friday. And that was really how we started playing together. I would jump up on the stage and do a song in the middle of a shift and then I was like, hey, you should play with me and we just kind of took off from there. We got some yeah. gigs at restaurants and bars around town. Yeah, it was part-time for a while. We never really anticipated it being our full-time career, but it was honestly something we loved so much and we got to do it together and it just grew more and more. And so by 2019, we both quit our day jobs and we were able to just pursue music full-time. But obviously in 2020, things took a little bit of a turn but let's backtrack a little bit more. So while we were playing music together and dating, we also ended up eloping in 2017. We went to Banff National Park in Canada and we eloped in the snow-capped mountains in the evergreen trees, actually. Yeah, we were supposed to elope by a beautiful turquoise lake. It's called Pato Lake, but there was like a huge snowstorm. So we ended up getting married in the parking lot and it was perfect because there were these huge evergreen trees. And so back to 2020, our lives slowed down like everyone else's, but we got into a couple different side ventures. We actually started a candle making business. Yeah, we began to partner with some restaurants around town. We collect their wine and beer bottles that they would typically throw out and we upcycle them into candles. So we learned how to like cut them and sand them. And we did it right before Christmas, which would not recommend. Give yourself some time if you're gonna get in a business that's gonna take off around Christmas. Oh yeah, it was like our house was transformed into a candle making factory. Yeah. But we've since moved our operation to my mom's basement, thanks mom for that <laughs> and our house is back to a normal functioning household but yeah that's been really fun and we've kind of kept that going a little bit since then so yeah we did that and then we actually got into fostering kittens the opportunity presented itself quite literally on our doorstep litter literally <laughs> um, a neighborhood cat brought its litter to our doorstep <laughs> and we kept two of her kittens and homed the rest and then we homed one more litter that someone brought to us but then in our free time we basically binge watched all the travel vlogs on YouTube yeah, we watched more travel vlogs than we watched like movies or TV shows and we just really grew to love flying the nest and the endless adventure. They're our favorites, but our bucket list got so huge. Oh my gosh, so big. <laughs> we have so many countries that we want to travel to, which is why you guys are probably here today. So we got into travel vlogs back in 2019. We were searching things to do in Iceland and we found this travel couple from Australia and we saw they travel full time and that's what they do for a living and we were just blown away. We started to watch all their videos and they made us want to travel to countries that we had never even thought of before. So this opened up a new idea for us. We never thought about documenting our travels with video until we saw these couples. And yeah, I think our little entrepreneur hearts kind of were wondering like, hmm, could this be another little side venture for us that we could not only inspire other people to travel, but we could actually be traveling more because of it. We're musicians first and foremost, but we travel in our free time as much as possible. So so we're not really sure where this channel is going to take us, but our hope is that as we continue to grow with supporters like you guys, we'll be able to travel more and more and take you guys along with us. So that's exciting for us. So before we jump into the Q&A with the questions that you guys asked us, we have to tell you first about our family. So we're a family of seven and no, we don't have children. <laughs> not human children, at least. We have our two pugs, Mr. Bean and Miles Davis. We love them with our heart and soul and you'll see them a lot more in our videos, especially 
the, the local ones. We're gonna start taking them to places around here and featuring them a lot more. And then we have our two rescue cats, which we kind of mentioned earlier. One is Timbit. He's named after Tim Horton's donut holes since we eloped in Canada. And then the other one is Ringo Starr. And then outside of our house, we have their mama, who we lovingly refer to as Mama. <laughs> she's the best. Honestly, she just prefers to be an outdoor cat, but she's spayed and taken care of, and she lives in a heated house and kind of just like lives on our front porch. So yes, we are animal freaks, and you're probably wondering, hey, if you're trying to do all this international travel, who watches your pets while you're gone? And thankfully, Grammy Sheila, which is Laurel's <laughs> mom, takes care of them. So she's always with them while we're traveling. So we, we thank her so much for that because yeah, we thanks, couldn't do it without her. <laughs> yeah, our pets love her as much as they love us, if not more. Yeah, so. <laughs> probably sometimes more. I think she um, gives them more treats than us. <laughs> so with all of that being said, our channel's really going to be a mix of our music and our travels. And I think we're gonna try to incorporate our music while we travel. We're learning as we go. And if you guys have suggestions, we'll take them. So let us know if you have any pointers or things that would make our channel even better. Yeah, for sure. So let's get into that Q&A because we got asked a lot of really awesome questions. Okay, I'll ask you the first one. Yeah, let's do it. What is your favorite part of traveling? Hmm. Okay, I would say just being immersed in another culture. Obviously the food is hugely important for us. We love international cuisine and even in the States, just different states have food that they're known for. So we always love checking that out. But just being in a different culture, a different place than what we're used to, I love that. I, I love a good culture shock. So question number two, what is your favorite dish you've had while traveling? It's so hard to pick one, and I feel like this answer could change day to day, but mm -hmm. what first Depending came on your mood. <laughs> yeah. What first came to my mind was in Iceland, we went to a cafe in Reykjavik called Cafe Loki. We had mashed cod on rye bread, and I was expecting it to just be, you know, something you try because you're in Iceland, but it was just a perfect comfort food, but like light, but warm, and on the side we had rye bread ice cream, and in Iceland they sometimes bake their rye bread in the ground because the earth is so hot from the volcanic activity so that was just so cool and amazing <laughs> yeah we actually really fell in love with rye bread there like, i remember my gram and my dad they would have sandwiches on rye bread and i just never got into it but it's so different there because it's sweet and yeah. it's more dense and we actually loved it so much that when we were in the airport flying back home we bought a few loaves and we kept them in our freezer and just <laughs> ate them for breakfast for a few months yeah, after like rationed it out yeah it was <laughs> so, so good. good so yeah that, that was awesome do you want to give a food since food is such a big deal yes yeah you're gonna see a lot of food in our channel our taste palettes are very similar so that's one thing that we share in common but we love asian food so when we were in thailand we spent a month there in 2018 and we fell in love with khao soy in chiang mai we loved it so much it was just such a good noodle dish like i can't even describe it the broth is sweet and savory There's and crunchy noodles on top and then of course like the are they rice noodles mm -hmm. and just the spices and oh my oh. gosh so good their spices are like second to none it is like they just know how to cook it's so good what is one of the hardest lessons you've learned while traveling uh, we've definitely learned a lot of hard lessons. We always talk about this every time we travel, we're like, okay, what can we do better next time? But I'd say probably the biggest one for me is never book a window seat on a flight. We definitely learned that the hard way. You know, when you're on these long flights, 15 to 18 hours long, you have to get up and use the bathroom different times and you want to stretch your legs. And it's really inconvenient if you have to wake the person up in the aisle seat like over and over. On one of our flights, this lady would like, she'd be sleeping and we'd have to wake her up and then by the time we'd use the bathroom and come back we'd try to hurry back and she'd already be sleeping so we'd <laughs> yeah. have to wake her up again i felt so bad how about for you what's the hardest lesson you've learned um one thing that really sucked was when we went to prague we exchanged currency in the airport because when you get off of your flight and you know you get your baggage and everything before you exit the airport they have stations to exchange currency and we thought well that's convenient let's just do it here so we're never do that no we found out that the rate is so much worse there we, we got, got bamboozled cheated. big yeah. time we got cheated out of like 150 dollars or maybe so more bad. but i guess the lesson would be to just know what currency exchange rates you're working with and kind of like compare a few places before you make your decision if Absolutely. you're exchanging a large amount of money all right so moving on 
Oh, this is a good one. We didn't read through these yet um, together, but this is gonna be fun. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. So what is your favorite quirk about me? Ooh. Um, I love how much you love Christmas. Oh. <laughs> you are like Clark Griswold and Kevin McAllister rolled into one. Well, that's, that's probably the best compliment you've ever paid me. Yeah, yeah. but no, just like from like even mid-November to like mid-January. Everything is just like so festive and you just make me feel like a little kid hmm. at Christmas. And I also love how like particular you are about your closet with <laughs> like every shirt has to be color-coded and the hangers are all facing the same way. And I just think it's funny because you're not really that particular no. about other things. <laughs> it's just like closet and sock drawer. It's yeah. like has to be just so. <laughs> yeah, and I do the laundry so I have to like keep up with it but I think it's cute so well, I would say for you, um, hands down, it has to be the way that you're affected by food because it doesn't matter if we get into a fight or if you're depressed or anything like that. I know that like your mood will be like switched like that if you have good food in I'm front like of you. I'm like a pug. Yeah, pretty much I like am. our pugs. Yeah. But yeah, I just know without a doubt, like I just have to bring you food, make you food, because I do 99.999% of the cook. cooking. Yeah. Or just take you out to a restaurant and you're like so happy. So it's like. It's true. This is a big one. What's your favorite trip so far? Oh, man. Someone's playing music here now. I don't know if you can hear that, but. Yeah, there's some Joe and Jack going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I love rock and rolls blaring in this neighborhood. Okay, my favorite trip so far for various reasons. Obviously Canada, cause that's where we got married. So that was special. Cause then we eloped in Banff and then we just road trip to Vancouver and we went off an island off of the coast of Vancouver and stayed there for a while. And that trip I think was what sparked our mm -hmm. travel bug together. We yeah, knew like sure. this was gonna be big in our lives. So I think that is like obviously most memorable for me. But aside from that, going to Europe with you because when we went to Prague, it was your first time in Europe. That was my second time and my best friend lives in Germany. So she came over to spend the day with us with her parents and Cindy. Yep, and her boyfriend <laughs> and they hung out with us for the day in Prague and it was just so great. We were there in November, so it was the it wasn't like the Christmas markets weren't open quite yet, but it was the start of that season. So we just walked through the streets and drank a lot of mulled wine and it was so good and you're just like tipsy the whole time drinking this like hot wine. It's so comforting and we also fell in love with pilsners there um we oh love gosh. a good beer but man pilsners blew us away yeah i liked ipas before prague and i feel like prague just ruined me for like anything but like really good pilsners and so good oh yeah belgians and mm -hmm. so good yeah absolutely we can't wait to get back to europe that's in our plans for next year so we're planning like a big trip out there so that'll be fun all right, let's move on here. Okay, so what is your favorite activity that you've done on a trip? Oh, this is an easy one. Um, when we were in Thailand, we yeah. went to an elephant sanctuary. Um, and I had gone to Thailand in 2016 before we met, like right before we met. And I went to like a riding camp. I was 18 and I was with like a large group of people and I didn't know how harmful those are. So I learned later and we found out that there were actually sanctuaries that rescue the elephants out of the riding camps. And we got to walk with them and feed them and bathe them in a river. It was amazing. Yeah. It was like... I like get choked up talking about it. I yeah. love it so much. You still have to do your research with sanctuaries because some of them kind of have like a front of being a sanctuary, but the elephants still aren't treated well. So yep. if you ever get around to doing that, just make sure you're responsible and make sure you're with elephants that are being taken care of. Yeah, and we'll actually link the company that we went through in the description below. That was in Chiang Mai. We'll put that information down below if you guys are ever there. This is a reputable source for you. I think our computer died. That has our questions on it. Okay. When are you coming to California? Oh. That's a fun question. Actually, we will be coming to California in September. We are taking a camper van out of Las Vegas and we're gonna be hitting up national parks and camping out of this van. So it should it should be really fun. We've never done anything like yeah, this before. Yeah, it should be fun for you to watch. Cause yeah, we're noobs <laughs> at this and we're, we're gonna just roll with it and yeah. go with the flow. But yeah, we'll be in California in September. So um, it'd be awesome to meet up. I don't know. Mariah. Is that Mariah? Yeah. Oh, cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a good question. So one item 
you'd recommend bringing while traveling that most people wouldn't think of? I think one thing that has helped make packing and living out of the suitcase less stressful is those little like travel saver bags. They save a lot of space. Yeah. And you can pack like t-shirts in one, like your undergarments in another and just like keep everything organized and it saves a lot of space yeah, I think too. We, we got ours at like TJ Maxx and saved us a lot of stress because your t-shirts aren't flying around in your bag. And, all right, before we move on, I need a refill, but um, I also want to point out that our friend's wine glass says classy, sassy, and a bit smart assy. <laughs> this is not my cup, but it's kind of working with me it's tonight. For you. <laughs> I think I got that vibe going on. Okay, so the rest of these questions are music related. I think most of the people on Facebook actually ended up asking us music questions, mm -hmm. and then most of the people on Instagram were more about travel. So now we're going to jump into those music questions. Have you considered traveling for gigs in the Kalamazoo slash Grand Rapids area? Oh yeah, this one's coming from Danny, my uh, dad's cousin. So hey Dan, we would definitely consider traveling to Michigan. We would love to. One of the things that we want to do with our channel, obviously, is partner with places that we can stay and also vlog some of our travel time there and also play a gig. So we have some things worked out for later in this year. But yeah, we've played in different states before. I think the next question was have you ever played in Maryland by someone else and yes we have we used to play at a casino Rocky Gap Casino we play there pretty regularly yeah and gamble away all of our tips yeah <laughs> um since COVID we haven't played there um but there's a few other places that we've played in Maryland and we've played in Ohio and a, you know, a few other surrounding states, but we're always up for travel. And if we can fit it in our schedule, definitely. So if you know places in Kalamazoo that would have us um, hit us up because mm -hmm. we would love to work with them. Okay, so next question, why Johnstown? What keeps you here? Aw, so yeah, we are both born and raised in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. It's like an hour and a half east of Pittsburgh. If you've heard of it, you probably know of it as Flood City. It's had like three major floods, but it's been revitalized a lot, especially in the last few years. And this has just been a really amazing place for us to start doing music full time. The community here is very appreciative of live music and just the arts in general, which I think is a hard thing to find. And it's also not a huge city, so there's not, you know, a ton of competition like you would have in other cities that would, you know, allow you to gig some but not full time and of course friends and family mm -hmm. keep us here I mean we would like to move eventually like we don't see ourselves staying here forever but um yeah we love Johnstown mm -hmm. so. yeah it's home <laughs> so next question what do you got I think the last one have you been working on any new original songs during the pandemic so Laura and I do have original music we haven't fully shared that with a lot of people yet it's always like what we're working on on the side because when we perform out we do covers of songs from the 50s to the 90s and some newer ones in the mix but that's basically what people want to hear like when that's you're that's what I love too that's I love what we love bringing yeah. new life to old songs mm -hmm. yeah so you know that's where we put most of our focus but we are always working on like these originals on the side but yeah those were great questions and if you guys are watching on youtube and you don't follow us on instagram and facebook yet please go ahead and do that our accounts are just the evergreens music on both and we'll link those down below but if you have questions of your own and you want us to answer them in our next q a just write them down below and we'll definitely include them next time we do that yeah I when think... we get to five thousand. yeah so hopefully <laughs> that's soon so this has been really fun but you know like we said we don't know where this channel is going to take us and we have a lot of plans for it. We are always talking about where we want to go with this and you know where we want to travel and where we want to take you guys and video ideas and stuff like that. But we definitely plan to put a video out every week. So we thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing to us and all the nice comments that you guys leave us. And if you're watching this video right now and you haven't subscribed to us yet, we'd really appreciate it if you click that little subscribe button and like this video and say hi, so. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and follow us on social media, like Instagram and Facebook. We're on there and we try to stay pretty active. So you'll see a mix of our travels and our music on those as well. But yeah, thank you guys so much. And we're so excited for what this year has to hold for us and our travels and our music. And then also for next year, we're all already planning a lot of things. So we will see you guys next week with another fun adventure vlog. I think we're heading to Pittsburgh and we're going to be touring that city. So <laughs> we'll see you guys then. See ya. So put me on a train. I don't care where it's going. Fly me on a plane. Maybe I'll go wild. Need an RV. No plans. Just you and me. I need to go somewhere.